Hey guys, uh, my name is Jose Luis and somebody asked me on YouTube to create a tutorial about Endure Lighting I don't know if it is said like this, Endure, Interior maybe, <laughs> I don't know and he said that he has a, a scene where there is no light coming from the outside of the room and he asked me for for a setup lighting for for this kind of, of scene so <coughs> I'm sorry um, there he doesn't or well, he did not gave me some specific lights he has in, in his in his room so I create my own <coughs> I'm sorry I did a, a, a simple living room it has a few things a few accessories has a table a couch uh, something that looks like a TV <laughs> I don't know a LCD screen it has two lamps, some plants, frames for pictures of pretty girls, of course. And this is the result. Well, this has a little bit of composition too. Let me show you. Something very small, it's nothing fancy. So, let's start the tutorial. First, I got already my, my sim, and what I did was find um, or, or what what I do usually what I do on a regular scene with, with windows or doors or something is wonder where the lights come from. If there is a window, a door, uh, there is some hole in the roof. I don't know what it, what how to say it on English but you have seen it um, so like oh, when you have no windows or doors or holes on your walls or roof you need artificial light to illuminate the scene in this case I decided to, to add two lamps one is over here the other one is not here but it's supposed to be here it's because I did it after I did the scene so I'm gonna copy it oh no, I'm leaving it like this I'm gonna copy when the lights are already set up so let's start the first thing I'm gonna do <coughs> is adding a, a lamp a point lamp it's gonna be a point lamp right here where the bolt is so let's add a lamp shift 8 to bring this menu or menu I don't know <laughs> and let's scroll down to lamp and add a point lamp okay now this point lamp has no shadows by default and has a wet color we will give it a warm color I don't know, maybe like this. Okay, let's try this one. We are reddish. Lamp. I don't know, something like this. And let's try. It. Well, let's see how it looks. And dimensions 75%. Well, there is my ambient clutch turn on. That's why it looks so right. I'm gonna turn it off here in the work properties, work button, and turn off by checking this and unchecking this. Okay, so we have this warm color, but it's filling the whole scene, and usually lamps are not that strong. So I'm going to set up the fall off for a lamp. By default, it comes to 25 units or meters. I don't know. I use.
various meters I configured over here on the units use metric because here in my country we use metric and almost all over the world we use metric I think just England and United States use yards and that weird stuff <laughs> um, so I'm going to I'm going to check this sphere button or box to see my um, range for the fall off of this lamp. I'm not sure if this affects how the lamp lamp works on checking it or checking it. But I know that I can see the fall off distance. Now hitting W where the lamp when the lamp is selected you can see uh, fall off distance let's check let's click it and reduce the fall off I don't know maybe it five you can do it uh, by these parameters <laughs> or these numbers you can click and hit five okay so let's see how it looks okay we have a nice fall off you know the room is lighted illuminated <laughs> it's lit uh, where the lamp is and fall off when it goes far from the lamp I'm sorry if I am a little bit a little bit messy with my English uh, <laughs> I'm not used to to use it we speak only Spanish here okay now I'm turning on the ray trace shadows because we want some nice shadows projected from the lamp and I want it soft uh, maybe soft means two in the soft side soft size but by using soft shadows we need to add samples these samples I don't know technically how they work but I know that more samples more sub shadows more render time so I'm going to start to using I mean five maybe and adaptative QMC or, or constant QMC means as far as I know that there is a a range or a threshold where it will stop sampling and start sampling another uh, or start computing something else I don't know uh, I usually leave it like, the, like this or use constant so it will sample all that he has to sample and then start sampling another shadow or another I don't know so it's a annoying message stop maybe the antivirus Stop it. Right, let's like this. So now I want to use shadows and let's see how they look. Okay, now we have these nice shadows, a little noisy because of the samples, but it's nice. You can see the projections over here, over here, maybe it's too dark yet, but we got the idea. There is a trouble or a problem when you do this setup I'm doing. It's because this has to be lit by this lamp. I guess this one too. But they are not because there is a bulb and our lamp is inside the bulb. I'm going to take the lamp a little bit out. Okay. In any case nobody is watching where <laughs> is the lamp from our camera and I'm going to check this layer only on our lamp this will make that our lamp only lit or illuminate and cast shadows by the or on the measures that are that are on this layer or the layer where the lamp is, is the lamp is on layer 2, well 
it will only illuminate and cast shadows on layer 2. It is in 1, 2, 3, it will use the three layers or you know, you, you understand. So, I'm going to take the, I don't know how you call it, uh, here we say this is a lamp screen, I'm not sure if, if in English it's called the same, but I'm taking this lamp thing move it to layer 2. Okay, now I'm going to, with shift 2, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we can change the layers, 1, shift 2, we have both se selected, and rendered to see how it looks, and it looks exactly the same, but this has a <coughs> tricky thing that I will show you later. Okay, I'm going to use a default material without specularity, I don't want specularity right now, it's just a clay material, you can say it's a clay, because this tutorial is about lighting, illumination, not materials, not shaders, not textures, but everything. Okay, now I'm going to Add. Oh, I guess I did it wrong. Well, these lights that are projected on the roof and on the floor because our lamp thing <laughs> projects make sh make uh, make the light uh, hit or the light hit the this part of the the lamp and stop here but some other part of the light hit the floor and hit the roof okay so i'm gonna add some spotlights for do this but to do this okay i'm going to use the same color i used it on the past lamp and here on the hex button we can see the the hex for the light the light I'm sorry so I'm gonna copy to select my new lamp I'm gonna paste it okay now we have the same color of light I'm going to reduce the fall off distance maybe over here and I'm going to increase spot size okay. now uh, scroll down make blend one and uh, this blend what does this blend is look okay is make a, a fall off the center of the light to the sides it blurs it I don't know it make it blurry and soft and I want to try how it looks so I'm gonna do it like this I'm leaving the shadows and buffer shadows I don't need really good shadows because they they are not necessary I guess right now so this one, I got two, just 1.3 and copy this one with Alt and D. I'm sorry, that's my Facebook <laughs> making this up. Uh, like I was saying, Alt D and click and uh, right click to cancel the movement of the link copy that I am doing this cancels just the move the movement you can see that there are two lamps now now I have this lamp selected I'm gonna hit R to rotate one 180 degrees okay so now we have a spotlight facing up and let's see how it looks Okay, now we 
have this nice effect more shadow I mean more light here a little bit here a little bit here you can adjust of course uh, the strength of the light the fall of distance the, the spot size too you can use ray tracing shadows you can use buffer shadows you, you gotta test everything and see what works better for you okay now if I want to make this part of the lamp and seems that it seems to emit light or let light through we need to create a new shader for it this is the only shader that I'm going to do in this tutorial and it's very simple has no texture this and the one from the TV screen or LCD screen. So uh, this is layer two. These ones or these two, <laughs> I'm going to move them to layer one. And very important, hit this layer one. or important elements. Okay, now I'm going to create a new material. Let's call it lamp thing because I don't know how to say it. And uh, let's take the same color that the light has. I still have it, so I just going to paste it over here. Okay. Of course, there are no lights, so <laughs> it's gonna render dark. Uh, I'm going to increase the emit amount about I don't know that far maybe zero that far. Okay. I'm going to add or copy better copy this left with shift D not alt because we are we are going to change these parameters and we need it to be individual. So I'm going to increase a lot, maybe 80, this lamp's power, and add subsurface scattering to our lamp thing. I guess I'm going to copy the color here. I'm not going to explain this because I don't even know how it works exactly, but you know, testing I have been. I have come to this conclusion. See, there is a cool effect of light coming through the lamp thing. I don't know how it looks better. I think 0.2. Maybe. Okay, we can increase the emit amount. I don't know, it's 6. If we want to make it look more intense. Okay, now we lost this effect. I'm gonna leave it like this. You can try, you can test, always. This lamp is very important. It has this layer only. And let's see how it looks now. Okay, looks nice, but I like it at least. <laughs> now, I'm going to copy now that I have this lamp lighting set, I'm going to copy all that I did with O, with A, I'm sorry, with A, I select and deselect everything in the B key, B from bull, I don't know if in English there is a difference between B from bull and B from data <laughs> but B from good and in grab all that our new lamps with the lamp the physical and mm, shift D I'm going to shift D to duplicate then I do shift because maybe I want to change something and I want it like this I don't want to affect everything else all the other 
lens. Okay, now let's hit render and see how it looks. Okay. Nice, so now it has some nice lighting here from the back. I like how it looks. How it looks at the shadows. Some shadows here, some shadows here. Now, if you are at night in your home and you are, I don't know, you want to rest or you are there with your girlfriend, and there is a nice mood and a nice mood, nice and smooth. It can be smooth, I don't know. And you want it like this, but if you are seeing TV, the TV or the screen is going to produce some light too so let's turn on the TV and try to produce uh, it's a neat TV it's a very very good good TV I'm going to take this face from the TV and hit shift S to take my cursor my cursor I don't know, <laughs> to the center of or to the middle of my screen. Okay, I'm gonna leave edit mode with tab. I guess you already know this. I'm going to hit shift A lamp area lamp. Why area? Because this one has the shape that I need. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees facing the living room or facing the room. Okay. Now, in, in area lamps, area lamps, sorry, the fall off is very, I don't know, tricky. You have a big fall off, and the lamp seems to emit very, very, very strong light. So I'm going to use a short fall off, maybe one, but three, but two, and seeing it the front. I know there is my screen. I'm going to adjust the area shape. It's rectangular, it's not square, so I'm using rectangle. And increase the size. Well, man, if it goes too much, you can hit shift while scrolling and the movement will be shorter, smoother. Not shorter, not smoother. Is the Y size over here? Okay, and now this lamp will illuminate from this shape. Okay, but now it is inside the TV. If I render now, if I render now, I'm sorry, maybe there is no light coming from it. Let's see. Okay, there is, but you know, it looks weird. It looks like a ring light or something like this. I don't know. <laughs> so, I'm going to take the screen and do something similar, or similar, or something very, yeah, similar to what I did to the lamp thing. I'm going to take it. It's already selected. Hit P to separate. Going to separate my selection. Now I'm going to select my lamp and uh, I'm going to hit Ctrl Shift Alt and C and set a region to geometry. Now the gizmo or the pivot point is on the center of the geometry. And I'm, I'm going, I'm sorry, to move it to layer 3. Okay, now if I render now, I should have a new light coming from the TV. There it is. There it is. Okay. It looks nice, but we better add some shadows so it can project shadows over here, over here, maybe over here, I don't know, here too. I should project. I'm sorry. It's gonna project shadows here. Jesus. I need to practice more my English. Okay, so select the lamp, hit here 
ray tracing shadows. Click here and select this layer only because I'm going to activate the the layer with the screen. And I don't want it to block the light. And I want this screen light to illuminate or to lit here too. So I'm gonna move it to layer two two <laughs> to layer two so it can illuminate this one that is in layer two. Okay. Now, now I'm going to increase samples. Something very low because I'm testing. I don't need to see uh, high quality shadows. Just need to see how the uh, behaves on the scene. And leave it like this. Hit constant. And render now again. Okay. Now we can see there, is, there are new shadows. New shadows over here. Very noisy shadows because of the samples. And but it looks pretty nice. We have these artifacts or these errors. Well, this is not such an error, but, but this looks weird. And I notice that this happens because the position of the light. So I'm going to move it a little bit out from the TV and try it again to see. better behavior. You can of course adjust the energy or the strength of this light. I don't think the LCD monitors or TVs uh, emit uh, such a powerful light like the old TVs use it to do. So I'm going to decrease to dot, to dot 2.6 I'm not saying that one is the energy that TVs use it to to emit, but I don't know. I, I, it it seems to me that it has uh, much light coming from. But it's a matter of taste, I guess. You can do whatever you want. It's a free country, I guess. You're a free country. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to create layer 3, a new material called LCD string and I'm going to increase the emit amount I don't know, 2.62 and see how it looks it's very very loud better now and it's emitting light now we have a smooth or a warm mood on our scene at this I like it. <laughs> at least so now we have this of course you can add all the shaders you want you can add a lamp over here and that houses usually have or some little lamps have you seen that I guess have you seen that I guess they usually are over here and over here and well, well you understand by the way this is called grease pencil you hit the keep it pressed and draw with left click and you know it reminds me when I was in kindergarten and hitting the or pressing the and right click you can erase and the properties of 
Grease Pencil are over here. Layers and I don't know, color, thickness. I don't know what it is. Frames. Well, surfaces. Ah, this one surface is going to project. The surface, the draw, the drawing with it with the grease okay. So now we have this. Let's add a little, a little bit. I'm sorry, a little, <laughs> a little bit of compacity. So I'm going to hit Control Left Arrow of my keyboard, and this is the finished image. Finish it. But I want to see the new one. How do I do this? I don't know. Ah, here. Let it compose it. Compose. I don't know. So, what did I did? I took the render layer. I went to duplicate this and do the steps again. I hit Shift A or press Shift A. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Color. We are adding nodes, by the way. If you are not familiar, familiar with nodes, you can see tutorials over the net, the internet. There are a lot of them, and this is a very nice part or cheap part or I don't know branch of CG uh, art. I don't know, <laughs> but. It's very cool. It's very cool. I I encourage you to to learn a little bit uh, at least from this. Not compositing or compositing. So uh, I'm going to add a color, a gamma note. I'm not technically sure what this does, but I know it controls the gamma. And the gamma controls exposition or the light how bright or something like that is our scene so I'm going to take it and compose I'm going to kill the this one I don't mind it because they make it slow ok now you can see that when I decrease gamma my image becomes brighter but it lost some of color saturation. So first I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. Uh, and something I forgot about light lighting RC. You can always use ambient occlusion. What is ambient occlusion? I'm not technically sure, but I know that illuminates and creates shadows by proximity. What does this mean? That this base is going to create a contact shadow over the floor by activating the ambient occlusion. You want to see? I'm going to show you. I'm going to duplicate this camera and Ctrl Zero to use it as my default camera. Shift F to activate flight mode. I don't know. It's like flying on a spaceship. And a little bit here. So if I want to see the ambient occlusion, this ambient occlusion, well, you can activate it by checking here. There is a lot of settings here, indirect lighting, uh, ray tracing gator, approximate, never mind about this. Right now we are just going to see the distance, the strength, the fall off, and the add or multiply setup. If I do it in add render, it's gonna bright or illuminate our scene a lot. See? And now it creates these shadows here. Okay. Uh, let's do a render without this and see how different it looks. It's basically basically not materials. 
here are some shadows and it's noisy it is noisy because our samples just like on the lamps that we saw before more samples more soft, soft shadows more render time okay so I don't want it to be that bright but I want to use the ambient occlusion because these nice shadows it creates and it enhances detail too of the scene you know when you find a render you can see the details a little bit more because the soft shadows or the contact shadows make a, a limit or I don't know create a transition from objects I don't know but it looks nice and it's a good way to fake global illumination it's not the same it's not even close I, could, I guess but it looks nice so I'm going to decrease the factor but before that if I hit multiply instead of lighting creating this white light on our scene it will just add the soft shadows and it's going to darken our scene too it's not going to, to lit it's going to <laughs> unlit it's going to to create I don't know more darkness on the scene so if I hit render you see it's a little bit darker and we have our shadows our content shadows Okay, so I'm going to stick with the shadows, the pretty shadows here, but I don't, I don't want it to be that dark. So I'm going to use a factor of dot five maybe, and hit render again. distance you are going to get a noiser image but to me it looks more more realistic 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 I don't know you know and and the fall off will make the shadows fall off on a certain distance I guess the strength marks the distance you know one meter one unit from here to here or dot one it's going to make them, make them fall off from here to here. You know, if I no, I'm sorry. It's inwards. Less strength lets the shadow go, go and go and go. More strength makes the shadow be more I don't know, closer to the object casting it. I guess it works like this. But you can try it always you can try and see and say hey this guy is this guy is not he doesn't know what he's talking about okay so to do this and then I'm going to leave it like it was one one with follow up this samples five and going to select my default camera camera here it is a little bit 
bit of light or increase the brighter zones and add a little bit of contrast with the second one. Okay. Now uh, I use the gamma. I lost a little bit of saturation, not too much. I'm going to get it back. So I'm using a hue saturation mode. And the saturation is by default 1. 0 means black and white. And it looks nice. <laughs> I guess nicer. Or I like it. <laughs> uh, so saturation 1.03. It's not even visible, I guess. But if I do it too much, it looks ugly. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm going to add maybe a filter. This is a filter I use. I use much because it sharpens my render. And it looks a little bit nicer. Right now, uh, you I use. I'm sorry, I use Shift A, filter, filter. Okay, and select sharpen. sharp even increases our noise from our shadows but it's because it's by default in one strength I'm going to use it in dot zero eight maybe okay it's a little bit sharp you can you can I'm sorry compare this with this node output split viewer so connect this one connect this one before the node filter and you can see it because this filter is going to let you see a comparison or compare between okay now I don't see it maybe I use this one from here that is a lot much more different and see it oh, here here it is so factor is this line without compositing I mean I mean with compositing without compositing see so you can see here is the comp one no here is the composite one I don't know <laughs> I made a mess here I guess the left means this you can try and give me a tip make a tutorial for me okay so I'm going to keep working here stop talking uh, shift A G I want to use or to add some big net I learned this technique from from Andrew Price and his blenderguru.com tutorials okay where is it where is it I'm going to use a converter Matt Start lens distortion, and I'm going to use. I'm going to connect them. I'm going to use a filter blur. It's a blur like the one you use on GIMP or Photoshop. Photoshop. Okay. Get the viewer. Distortion. I'm going to set it one distort, and it warps or distort our render. Now, on the math node, I'm going to, I'm going to set the value to zero, and select well, greater than greater.